So uh, the previous speaker was talking about uh, synthetic data sets, so here I am. Um, in this presentation, I want to uh, tell you about our alchemical machine learning exercise where we are aiming to uh, answer the question how we can treat systems with our, our large number of elements, so in our case, 25. And uh, as a toy system, here we want to hop on the thread of, how do I change? I don't know. It works. Yeah, and with this, sir, I hope on the thread of high entropy alloys, which are uh, novel metallic alloys, very interesting or uh, appealing for a uh, scientific community um, due to their unique properties. And uh, why it's interesting for us to uh, study the system is because you can control uh, their properties by doping with small concentrations and adding different uh, number, uh, various number of uh, chemical elements. And uh, uh, these uh, systems are quite challenging for modeling um, because of uh, their chemical diversity. So uh, what has been done so far in the literature, uh, there are many nice works uh, about high entropy alloys, so we can um, categorize them in three uh, major lines. So uh, these are first principle calculations uh, uh, on lattice or lattice metals, uh, models, but um, most of them, they are, um, study uh, uh, four, rarely five uh, components alloys uh, and very, uh, or narrow, very narrow uh, phase spaces. So uh, another problem is that there is no, uh, that data set are available in the community, which would uh, help us to uh, get some insightful information about uh, different phase stabilities and help to predict the uh, uh, perform discovery exercise, predict new phases um, uh, of high entropy alloys and uh, help, help to facilitate combinatorial search. And uh, of course, also uh, having multiple species in your system is very challenging because the descriptors are usually uh, tend to scale badly with a number of different chemical elements. So uh, I'm not going to bore you with this slide. I've, I'm, I'm sure you've seen uh, uh, th the, this slide from different angles. So, but I just use it to guide you through my talk. So. Um, and that's going to be a complete story where I start from discussing data set, how we uh, created it, uh, then about features, models, prediction, and so on. So, um, first of all, we looked at uh, all the elements which are used typically to create high entropy alloys. And uh, here you see on the slide, and uh, the most, uh, the top popular elements are 3D uh, transition metal uh, elements. So, and we focused on those um, because uh, we also want to get some insights or if we can cluster um, elements by their chemical nature. So we, for now we took uh, the group which share some similarities uh, in their, their chemical nature. And then uh, based on these 25 elements, uh, we created a structure either on FCC or BCC lattice, which contains uh, from three to eight random uh, chemical elements. Then uh, we shuffle these structures or not, uh, or not. So we have on lattice and off lattice, uh, off lattice structures. Uh, we created one million of structures for each of category. You can see on the right hand side of the slide the 2D representation of the randomly generated data. And then with FPS selection, uh, we uh, secured the uniform sampling of uh, um, uh, our randomly uh, generated data. Um, all the selected structures were recomputed with a uh, uh, plane wave or VASP code um, with non spin polarized DFT uh, containing around uh, uh, from 30, 36 to 48 uh, atoms per structure. Um, so this data set, we also want to propose to the community as a, a, a possible data set, which could be used to benchmark uh, the scaling with a uh, uh, number of chemical, uh, chemical elements with the system. And uh, uh, now since uh, these are some properties uh, 
of uh, the data set, which atomic concentration are represented uh, in here. So for every element, they're more or less the same. Uh, here you can see, you might wonder why you don't uh, see any differences uh, because it's uh, mostly, we mostly target uh, uh, low concentrations because we want to model uh, something doping, re uh, doping related, uh, small concentrations and uh, many elements in the same frame. And uh, also on the right hand side, uh, there is displacement with respect to uh, crystalline lattice. For now, uh, they're not that um, um, large, um, but we also planning on adding uh, more displaced uh, uh, structures, more sh uh, rattled structures. Um, so now we have our data set. Uh, we also need to describe uh, uh, our data to pass it to the model. So since I'm coming from the lab where we uh, we uh, uh, identify ourselves as, uh, as a soap family, so I'm using soap descriptors, um, uh, which is a atomic density based descriptor uh, where we use, uh, and here you can see that uh, this descriptor uh, uh, treats separately every chemical element and uh, their uh, uh, which of course um, uh, makes it scales badly with our number of chemical elements and there uh, doesn't help that to uh, cover many all the combinatorials um, permutations of different species of course you also need a large data set so um, what do we do? So um, we might ask ourselves, can we use the similarities uh, between different elements? Or can we use the similarities in their our behavior? And uh, this question was discussed in the article of my former colleague, um, where they showed that you can actually uh, represent, if you project um, or uh, your uh, chemical space in a, uh, if you reduce your chemical space and project all the elements that you actually can see that they group um, uh, by their nature. Like for example, here, hydrogen, you can see that uh, it's closer to not the first group of elements, but closer to their alkali metals. And uh, they come up uh, uh, with uh, this idea of uh, creating basically a matrix a kernel which would compress your chemical space and uh, providing you sort of with a pseudo species uh, which could be used to represent your real species. So, uh, and they showed on the example of alpazolite that it, that it actually works. The alpazolite data set has 35 elements in total. And uh, here they use the compression up to uh, four uh, chemical, pseudo chemical um, elements. So, and they got uh, quite high accuracy. So we adopted the, the problem of that approach was that it, will go, it works so good, but it takes uh, roughly, oh, it takes roughly two weeks to com converge the point uh, using 6K training points, mm, maybe not so good. And so uh, we adopted this approach and uh, we re-implemented it uh, uh, GPU in GPU friendly manner are uh, using PyTorch. Um, now um, it takes much faster. So I'll just quickly guide you through this chart. Um, that explore. Oh, cool. So uh, as an entry, uh, first you pass, uh, you initialize the coupling matrix where all the chemical compression is happening. You initialize it with a um, the differences in electronegativities between our different ele elements in your system, and then you initialize model weights uh, as random. Uh, then, of course, you also you also have as an input from your data set uh, the um, uh, density expansion and energies. Then, uh, at the first iteration, come on, at the first iteration, uh, you uh, compress uh, your density expansion. Mm, with the initial uh, matrix, you compute power spectrum, uh, then you predict energy forces, loss, and then uh, with a uh, gradient-based uh, optimization algorithm, you do the uh, propagation uh, and uh, optimize a coupling matrix and weights uh, simultaneously. So, yeah, so their chemical, uh, the degree to which you want to compress, you pass through or uh, operating the, cup, uh, the coupling matrix. 
And the uh, uh, important thing is that uh, differently from approach presented uh, by our colleague, we uh, use a uh, simultaneous uh, optimization of coupling matrix and model weights, um, which are, um, which makes it uh, helps to drop down also the accuracy. And uh, so what we achieved so far, so uh, these are the predictions on the uh, data set I uh, discussed just before. Um, so you can see that uh, we already, so this is still work in progress. Um, and uh, we hope to, of course, we hope to get more points on the learning curve. So, and you can see that for quite diverse uh, um, data set where the sigma on energies, the standard deviation of energies is uh, uh, around two electron volts per atom, uh, we managed to achieve the accuracy of uh, 30 milli electron volt um, per atom. Uh, and also uh, using their energy based on their model, we predicted the forces, um, the error you can see on the top of this chart uh, of the scatter plot. And uh, <clears throat> if you toss in 200 training points uh, um, with forces, you can drop the energy even lower to uh, 240 uh, MeV per, uh, per angstrom. So um, yeah, so with this, sir, I would like to conclude and uh, discuss a, a little bit our future steps, what we want to do next. So as I mentioned before, we want to expand our, our data set. We will add the structures with larger displacement uh, and the uh, structures which contain simultaneously more than eight elements. And uh, if you have any valuable inputs, uh, I'm all ears. So, uh, if you I don't know any, have any wishes or, and you want to be interested in uh, this data set potentially, um, so come over. Um, then also, uh, we want to, as I told you, um, we optimizing combining matrix in our uh, in our loop. So we want to investigate if this combining matrix can become sort of like an input parameter, or uh, in a sense that um, you can transfer to uh, th this matrix to another system, and you already have this coupling of the elements. Uh, um, for your model, then of course the features should be the same and the setup of the model should be the same, but uh, still could be also a nice result. And uh, also if we can get any interpretability of this combining matrix, if, if we can get some insights uh, uh, about chemical nature. Uh, and uh, yeah, with, uh, with respect to results, then next uh, our less ambitious goal is predicting phase stabilities and more running uh, NVT simulations uh, and uh, some other kinds of MD. So thanks a lot. We have time for a few questions. <clears throat> 